thing you've all been waiting for, whether you know it or not. We're gonna play Cat President. A more perfect union. Alright, so we're doing a new game here. I never dreamed that I would get involved in politics. I mean, I'm just a plain Jane. And nobody, I've never even voted before. But somehow, I found myself swarmed by presidential candidates. And they all want me to be their campaign manager. Which one should I choose? They're all such good options, I can't pick just one. Oh, but I should back up first and explain how I got into this situation. It all started last week, when I heard someone calling my name at the park. Oh. Oh, uh, what was my name again? Enter the perfect name for our heroine. Ooh. See, I was gonna go with my typical name that I use for all these games, but it wants a name for a heroine. Hmm. What's that character... Darn it, what's that character from the Hitchhiker's Guide? Not Zaphod, not Fred. No, it's not Fred. It's not... I don't know. Man, this is like the most intense decision of the game, but... Anybody remember that character from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Oh, Asriel? Asriel is a decent one. Um, yeah, that's a good... Um, no, we're gonna enter something other than that, though. Let me think about this. This is a very important decision, so we better get it right. Just saying. But yeah, if you got suggestions, let me know. That's filler code for I'm trying to think of a name. Hmm. I mean, Abigail's such an everyday name, though. <laughs> um. Actually, well... Hmm. I was going to say Sakura is a beautiful name, but it's also overused, you know? Um. Hmm. I have to admit, I'm a bit embarrassed not coming up with a good name at the moment. Okay, well, I guess I have to break out my search engine here. And figure out what is that character from Hitch Hikers Guide to the Galaxy Characters. I'm gonna look this up. Arthur Dent, Ford Prefect, Marvin, Slaughterbert Fast, Trillion! Trillion is the character. Yeah. We're gonna do that. It's a beautiful name. Trillion! That's my best friend, Lizzie. What is it, Lizzie? Did you hear they're having the big debate tonight that got us tickets? A debate? I have main character syndrome. Tell me about it. You didn't know it? There's the presidential debate. Oh, is President Daisy Doodle coming to town? That's so cool, I like her. What's she gonna debate? No, actually the debate's for presidential candidates. We're re running to replace Daisy Doodle when she leaves office next year. All six of them are in town, and they're gonna debate important issues like foreign policy and catnip. Plus, they're all adorable. I want to hug and pet each of them. All right. Probably should have mentioned this earlier. 20 years ago, the government got so corrupt that the Supreme Court decided to ban all humans from politics. Now the only politicians we have are cats. I know it sounds crazy, but the government's a lot more effective this way. Ah, I think I'll stay at my home. No, you gotta come. If you don't, I'll never forgive you. 
tutorial. In this game, you will occasionally be asked to choose Trillion's responses. Choose carefully. The options you pick affect you which ending you get. The better the options you choose, the better the ending. Cats? Let's go see some cats! This is gonna be fun! We got there about an hour early. Since nothing was gonna happen for a while, I decided to explore a bit. Maybe see if I could find a bathroom. It wasn't long before I got lost. It's like a maze. How are you supposed to figure out where to go? They need signs. After wandering around a few minutes, I found a fancy looking door. Step inside, but no one was there. Guess I'll try another room. Beg your pardon. Aw, oh, it's a cat. Do you lose your owner, little guy? Never been so insulted in my life. You think I'm a common street cat? How dare you talk to me like that? Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were a talking cat. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. I should have security throw you out immediately. Aw, oh, don't be mean. Cute girl comes wandering in and you try to have her kicked out. It's not what I would do. Yeah, I like your style. My style? Yeah, you snuck all the way backstage to meet with us? That's pretty brave of you. you. Got guts. I like you. Wait, if I'm backstage, that me. Oh, you're the presidential candidates. Yeah, I'm frisky. This is kind of like. And may I say, it's a pleasure to meet a beautiful woman like yourself. I'm DJ Nibbles. I'm the young, cute candidate. More like the empty-headed kitten, kitten who keeps rushing into danger. Can't help it if sometimes I get into trouble. I'm naturally curious. So you mean stupid? That grumpy guy over there is Thunderpaw. He seems to always be upset about something. Not true. I'll be happy when you losers drop out of the race. Not gonna drop out, I'm gonna win! I'm like Ash Ketchum, you know? Just gotta win. So, you didn't tell us your name. Oh, didn't mean to be rude, my name's Trillian. Why don't you come with me for a little while? I guarantee you'll enjoy it. You, you want to be alone with me? So I can lead you back to the audience area, of course. Let me help her back to her seat. Have you forgotten the debate's gonna start? We can't just escort humans, you know, cause... Like, we got 45 minutes to do nothing, and then the debate's gonna start, so... You can't help her. I'll call security, and they'll have you removed from the premises. All because you got lost. Uh, no, that's fine. I think I can find the way back. I can help you. Yeah, I'll find it. You guys focus on whatever it is you focus on before debate. Alright, nice meeting y'all. So, this background track, obviously Scott Joplin. Uh, I think the. I was gonna say this is like the easy winners, if I remember right. Scott Joplin, ragtime. Good stuff. Got out of the room as quickly as I could. I couldn't believe it, I accidentally interrupted three of the presidential candidates. What kind of a goofball does a thing like that? I decided to get back to my seat as quickly as possible, but ended up running into more cats. It's like cats everywhere, you know? Uh-oh. I bet they're going to evict me from the premises. Especially that one on the left. Humans aren't allowed back here. Yeah, I'm just trying to find my seat, you know. Yeah, these hallways can be pretty confusing. Not sure why we decided to, like, have the debate in this labyrinth. Just saying. Just chasing my tail for hours. So you're not mad at me for being lost and confused and helpless? You're not, like, irrationally gonna throw me out like Thunderpaw was gonna do? No, oh, we're not mad. These sort of things happen. Especially because we don't have security. 
you know. You want the third one on the right. Don't take the second one or you'll fall into the bottomless pit. Alright, my name's Trillian, by the way. Who are you? I'm Elvis Tiberius Kale the Third. You could call me Elvis Tiberius Kale. Uh, Captain left, left nodded his head as he said this. Are you also running for president? Well, duh. Although people say I should drop out because I'm last in the polls. <laughs> at least you made it to the debates. I'm Dr. Nom Noms. I'm also not polling very well at the moment. If it weren't for the Calicos, I'd probably be out of the running. Well, you both seem like very nice cats. Maybe the debate will boost your popularity. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm lucky to be here tonight. I'm just hoping to debate the issues and do my best for all the alley cats out there. It's not like I'm running to try to win. I just care about debating. Because debating's fun! Or because I think I can discuss topics and serve some kind of a noble purpose in advancing public discourse. Thanks for helping me. If I could vote for both of you, I would. Actually, you... No. That's very kind of you to say. Please enjoy the debate. Followed their directions and made it back to my seat. All right. Finally made it. Where were you? You'll never believe me, even if I told you. Because apparently I'm the only person in this entire building that gets lost on their way back from the bathroom. Spart despite it being like this horrible labyrinth maze-like thing that I'm not sure how anybody finds their way around. Alright, let's begin. Ah, the barn cats one more mic on a more mice policy. Interesting, yeah. After that, the moderator came on stage and explained the debate rules. The rules are pretty simple. Clap when there's a response you like but no interrupting the debaters, and no cat calls. The debate itself was pretty interesting. Thunderpaw was an intense debater. He yelled at the other candidates and constantly insulted them. If his goal was to look stronger than his opponents, he succeeded. Frisky didn't try to appeal to all the voters. He focused on one group, women. He wouldn't stop talking about how much he loved women. I didn't think it was very professional, my friend Lizzie liked it. DJ Nibbles was energetic as ever, which ended up hurting his debate style. He rushed into his answers with such enthusiasm that he tripped over his words, and twice he lost his place during speeches. Still, it's nice to see refreshing honesty in a political debate. Dr. Nom Noms did not do very well. He flubbed most of his answers and went on a long tangent about a birdbath he visited last year. It's almost like he was trying to fail. Kale did okay, I guess. He was a solid speaker, but definitely overshadowed by the other personalities in the room. I could see why he's last in the polls. As for the final debater, Rover, there's something different about him. I don't know what it was. He just seemed, I don't know, just really different from the other cats. At the end of the debate, the moderator called for silence. We've heard all the candidates' responses, but now we want to hear a question from a real person. An average citizen, not a politician. That's why we've picked a randomly selected audience member to give the final question of the debate. Yes, you entire audience of like 1,000 people in this room, or 500 people, or however many it is, you get to ask one question. Um, and that person... It's Trillian! What? This is not rigged at all. Come on up. Tell everyone your question. Uh. Uh. Okay. I don't know a lot about politics, but I know politicians are supposed to help people. So, how are you going to help me? I mean, I lost my job at the grocery store last week, and I'm still having trouble finding a new one. If I don't get a job soon... I might lose my apartment. 
I know my personal matters don't matter much, or my personal problems don't matter much in the political world, but what will you do as president to help people like me? That's a very good question. All questions that were asked here tonight have been good, especially the question of social inequality between cats and humans. Kale, you're a sound-headed moron. This isn't a question of social inequality. Yeah, besides the real social inequality is between cats and dogs. I have a suggestion. You can work for me, Trillion. What? You need a job? And I need a new campaign manager. I'll hire you. That'd help your problem, right? Never mind that I'm, like, dodging the question about how you'd help people like you. Um... Oh yeah, I can hire you too! No way, you want to work on my campaign! I'm sure there's room for you on the Kale campaign. You don't want to work for losers. Work for Thunderpaw. I only hire the best and the brightest. I have one question to ask. Do you have a dog? No. I offer my services. Come work for me. Alright. Me, 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 me. You all want me to work for you? But what are you going to do to help people? Oh, uh, never mind. We're running out of time for the debate. If you could just choose a candidate. Uh... Uh... Man, that's a tough decision. Six great cats, all running for president. And they all want me to work for them. How could I pick just one? I like them all. In the end, I decided to go with... Well, what do you guys think? Should we go with Frisky, whose campaign is targeted toward uh, women? Dr. Nom Noms, who likes to discuss um, and debate worthy causes. Thunderpaw, who is, you know, Thunderpaw. Kale, he's got quite the background there. He's got quite a name. He's a pretty average cat, I would say. Rover, who's a little bit different than most. And DJ Nipples, uh, who's just very high energy. All right. So I got one vote for Dr. Nom Noms. I admit, um, that's not exactly what I had expected, you know? So, like, if you mouse over these guys, I think they make noises. So that's like DJ Nibbles, we got Frisky, Dr. Nom Noms, Thunderpaw, Kale, and Rover. Meow. So... Yeah, we could certainly do Dr. Nom Noms. He's, he seems like... He does care quite a bit about the issues. Alright, well, if I don't hear anything else soon, I guess we're gonna go with Dr. Nom Noms. After all, he's got quite the name there. And he's a pretty intelligent fellow. And I'm sure he's a very multifaceted uh, cat. And you're correct that they didn't really get into uh, how is it that cats speak English, you know. Um, yeah. Nom Noms is pretty cool. Let's select him. In which we learn the curious truth between Dr. Beh uh, behind Dr. Nom Nom's campaign. That piece sounded like God Save the Queen. Almost. All the cats were so amazing and wonderful. Uh, I couldn't pick one, you know. But, I decided to go with the first cat to offer me the job. That's the fairest solution, right? I want to work for Dr. Nonos. Ah, he's most likely to win in a fight, you say. Aw, uh, now look, you've disappointed Kale. Kale needed a new campaign manager, and you took me away from Kale. Now he's going to be all disappointed and mopey. And yeah, Thunderpaw's like, ah, you loser. Didn't need you. Yo. 
Dr. Nom Nom is still a dog-loving maniac, no matter who's working for him. You have an attractive sister or cousin who's willing to work for me. I'm asking for a friend. Process that. Alright, that include, concludes tonight's Sharp Claw debate. Um, I forget what Sharp Claw is supposed to be like referenced to, but it's basically a province or city. Um. Oh my gosh, you got a new job! I can't believe it myself. It's almost never that easy. You think there's a catch or something? No way, Dr. Noms is such a nice, honest cat. He'd never try to trick someone. Uh, I've had people offer me jobs before just to tell me that they're actually unpaid internships. Wait, you saying they're paid internships? My dad said he had one when he was a teenager. But, you know, these days... Uh, right, who wants to focus on the past? Let's focus on the future. Where you work for Nom Nom, it's the next president of the USA. All right, what do you want to do? Should we go check in with the boss, Doctor Nom Noms, or should we have some time partying? I guess you guys probably want to meet Doctor Nom Noms and talk with him a lot more, right? As long as you guys don't protest, that would be my um, option. But um. Oh, well that's an interesting concept. Um, yeah, I guess cats, um, they have a very, hmm, let's say barbaric way of resolving disputes. They're very predatory animals, you know? Alright, uh, since, yeah, <laughs> your policy wonk. So let's get to work. Right for the candidate who um, kind of messed up on the questions in the debate. You could use some of her help, right? Then, after we meet him, we're going to celebrate with you. And if you get the chance, maybe ask him if he's willing to hire me too. Every campaign manager needs an assistant. Alright, sure, whatever. I totally won't forget to ask. What was I supposed to ask about again? No. Alright, went to the backstage area where security ushered me into a room with Dr. Nom Noms. Now we've actually got security backstage, because whatever. Here, let me give you a chair. Oh, thanks. Alright. Dr. Nom Noms pushed a human-sized chair into the room. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't noticed this earlier, but, um... Yeah, these chairs at this table are not for people. Huh. Well, that's quite a bit of effort for Nom Noms to go through, especially with security nearby, you know? They could have taken care of it. There! Now, before we have a begin, I have a confession to make. Oh! Okay. Can you keep this a secret? You know, I'm not gonna ask you to, like, sign anything. Even though I totally could, because that's how secrets and politics usually go, is that you have to sign a document, and whatever. Or acknowledge it in some kind of non-whatever. Have a tape or something in paper or whatever. The truth is, I don't want to become the President of the United States. I want to be, like, the first president of Mars, you know? No, no, no. The whole thing started out as a joke. My buddies told me I should run for president, and they would help me increase my book sales. But then, everyone took my campaign seriously, and now I'm one of the top five candidates. Wait, who's candidate number six? I want to know. You become a politician by accident? I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. No idea how I got here, I was just trying to get free publicity for my book. Now I'm in way over my head. So, why don't you quit? I can't. Can you imagine how my supporters would react if they knew this campaign started as a joke? They'd be hurt, betrayed, I couldn't do that to them. 
My only choice is to lose the race, but make it look like an accident. That's why I flubbed all the answers in tonight's debate. I'm trying to lose. So, you know the truth about my campaign. You still want the job? Well... Nope. Bye. No, just kidding. What do you guys say? <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know, animals like to mark their territory in those ways. I don't know if this volume is balanced properly. Let me check that. Oh, well, no, apparently I'm still louder than the game. But I could probably cancel some of the echoing if I turn my speakers down just a touch more. Yeah, so that's probably fine. You want to hear the other cat's offers? Okay. Sure. That's reasonable. Yeah. I mean, this guy's pretty duplicitous, isn't he? So. No. So, bye. But, I thought you said... What? I thought you said you didn't have any other job offers? Well, I guess I said that, but like, all the other candidates... Whatever. You either take this and crash the campaign. Or you go home broke. Oh, fine. We'll do it. Don't look so sad. I'm sure you'll enjoy this job. How many people have a chance to run a campaign, after all? Okay, but, uh, could you hire my friend Lizzie? After all, a great campaign manager needs an assistant. I'll pay her and you the same salary. Twenty-five grand a month. Oh, is that it? Just twenty-five grand? We're trying to bankrupt the campaign, remember? We overspend on everything. Especially chew toys. Those things are expensive. Nah, but I, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure if I could be a campaign manager for just 25 grand a month, you know? Is that all you can offer me? Okay, I guess I'll say that's pretty amazing. But sure. Whatever. All right, so let's make an action plan. Let's get down to business to defeat Nom Noms. Actually, I'm a little tired after the big debate. So I'm gonna get some sleep. Could you give me your contact info? I'll get in touch with you in the morning. You know, because apparently we've got to put in a lot of work to sink this campaign. All right. I promise to try my hardest. I'll come up with a winning, uh, I mean, a uh, losing strategy for the campaign. Alright, have a good night. See ya. Alright, and we see Lizzie, and tell Lizzie. So, do you ask him? Yeah, he said no. Sorry. Oh, cool. And he'll pay us each 25 grand a month. Ooh, I'm not sure if that's gonna pay for all the new clothes and shoes and... Okay, fine. Oh, and the hospital bill, too, you know? Because she fainted and whatever. I can hardly believe it myself. Personally, the thing is, I can't believe that Dr. Nons wants to lose the election. Who would have guessed? I mean, that's practically the definition of nice and friendly. Why shouldn't he... Or he's practically the definition of nice and friendly. Why shouldn't he be the president? I know a lot of people would uh, love the opportunity to destroy their boss's career. But Dr. Nom Noms is such a good cat. Can I really ruin his life like that? Man, I'm taking this too seriously. In which we go to Meow. Or Meow. And Dr. Nom Noms inspires some kittens. It's like Iowa, but it's Meow. You know, you told me last week that I'd be on a flight to Meow uh, with the presidential campaign. I'd say you were crazy. Yeah, it turns out I was just joking about him hiring you, so. 
Um, yeah, we're flying all over the country. So why Miyawa? That's where primary number one is. The primary primary. Um, I can remember that from the last election. The major political parties hold like a mini election in every state to figure out the best candidate. Yeah, there are three major primaries that he's going to com compete in. Our job is to make sure he loses. If we do our job well, we won't have jobs anymore. <laughs> Says they offer some very generous severance packages. After all, the more money that goes into employee salaries and severance packages, the sooner we'll be done with the campaign. So, maybe we should waste more money by getting fancy hotel rooms and going to nice restaurants and stuff? I always wanted to go to a, cloth, a restaurant with cloth napkins. And you know, that apparently makes it fancy. Maybe we can schedule something for Tuesday night. Oh, I didn't see you there. You were on the same flight as us? Sort of. They made me ride in a pet carrier. There's no way to treat a presidential candidate. I'm not fond of it myself. So, Trillian, I wanted to go over the plan for Miyawa before we arrive. The primary is next week, so we're going to be very busy. Alright, the research trial their other candidates are doing to get an idea of what the typical campaign trail looks like. Good thinking, but we want to lose. Maybe we should go off the beaten path. That's what I was thinking. I think we'll fail if... Well, what should we do? Should we focus our attention on voters? Should we uh, focus our attention on non-voters? Either way, we're going to pander to the demographic. It's just a question of, should we look like we're selling out? Or should we... I mean, here's where you get into the metagame, right? So you would think that, like, Focusing all your attention on voters would be good to help a campaign, but you could also get a lot of negative PR for doing that because it's pretty clear what you're doing is just pandering to the people because you want their votes. Whereas if you focus on non-voters, um, I mean, you get a lot of positive PR, right? So, I mean, but on the other hand, if you're focusing on non-voters, maybe it's not covered that well, so maybe there is no PR involved. Yeah, maybe later in the game we'll get uh, to focus on um, what parties people are in. Voters are usually decided. Non-voters are often just undecided, but they would vote, you know, if you could motivate them to. So... So I guess what I'm hearing is that the other candidates are all focusing on trying to make non-voters into voters, as opposed to trying to change the mind of the existing voters. So maybe we should go after the voters, because those are the people whose minds we cannot change. On the other hand, if we successfully change the minds of the voters, we win the election. So... I don't know. Maybe this is some kind of like Jedi, mi Jedi mind trick. Our candidate is Dr. Nom Noms, after all. He's a pretty smart fellow. Um, you might accidentally win targeting non-voters. Alright, so let's, let's say that everybody else is trying to like target the non-voters. Um, try to convert them to voting. So let's focus our attention on voters. That way they'll come out and support you in droves. No, 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 this is the wrong rationalization. No, no, no. The rationalization you want is that voters have already made up their minds. And therefore, we should actually go after the non-voters. Um, I don't know. No, no. We should avoid the non-voters because we might actually convert them into voters. We should go after the people who've already decided who it is they want to vote for. We should only speak to our supporters and whatever. 
No, 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 this is the opposite of what I want. Oh, I meant to say we should focus on the non-voters. That way, it still looks like you're campaigning with people, but there's no chance of them affecting your poll numbers. So, we're gonna visit every school in the area. You know, like, children can't vote. So... Also, Mia was a closed primary. I should sign up for bipartisan events. A closed primary is one where you have to be a registered member of a specific political party. For example, I'm a sharp claw. That means in the Miowa primary, I can only vote for a sharp claw candidate. So, if you reach out to the members of the other political party, the fancy furballs, it's meaningless. None of them can vote for him in the first. Eh, for him in this state. Yeah, Lizzie, what do you think? Please read up on political elections. Looks bad if my campaign's manager's assistant doesn't know what a closed primary is. Although, maybe I wanted it to look bad, you know? Uh, but whatever, got distracted by watching some fun TV stuff, you know? I want you to write a big speech for me. I'm going to be addressing the Miowa Sharp Claw Society on the eve of the primary. It's a big event, and all the major candidates have been invited. It's mostly ceremonial. Pretty sure that most of the big sponsors have already decided who they will vote for. You know, because sponsors and money buy votes. So, how long should the speech be? We're given 10 minutes to speak, but remember, I want to do badly. So, write a t I'll write a two minute speech. Or do you rather have one that's long and rambling? Two minutes is fine. Thank you very much, Trillion. Now if you excuse me, I have to get into a cat carrier. Because apparently that's how I'd roll. Alright, I almost wish he were a serious candidate. You know, because I use proper grammar. He'd get my vote. I secretly agreed with Lizzie. I mean, I joined the campaign because I thought Dr. Nanos was a good cat. But what, all this talk about failure and losing kind of makes me sad. I'll start to think that Dr. Nanos is a good cat. I mean, or it was a bad cat. I mean, running a fag campaign? Sure, maybe good politicians lie to people. But good cats don't lie. All that said, my objections toward Dr. Nom Noms dropped in an instant later that week when he was talking at a school for disadvantaged kittens. I want to tell you, all of the kittens stay in school. But why? There's no point. School is boring and stupid. Yeah, it's easy for you to say. You're rich and famous. I mean, okay, you do have a doctorate. So, you, I mean, you're like a doctor, but... Um... Yeah, you know, you're just rich and famous, and you didn't have to work for it. Some of us have real problems. Kids, I didn't come here today to lecture you. I came to help inspire you. Because I've been where you are. I spent the first four years of my life living in alleyways. Mom tried her hardest to get us upgraded from street cats to house cats. She even took a second job and went on welfare, but it didn't work. Nothing did. Why not? I have nine brothers and sisters. It was a huge litter and it was too much for one cat to carry. My dad, he wasn't around. I never even met him. Although you'd think that probably some of my siblings did. Because, yeah, ten siblings in one litter is quite a lot. I was the. Okay, never mind. Just kidding. I was the oldest, so I kind of felt like it was my responsibility to take care of the others. So, two of my brothers and I left when we were young to make things easier for them. Occasionally, I'd try to write them a check, help them out, you know. 
didn't happen very often. My brothers and I soon got separated. One lost a tail in a fight. One of them ran off to Claus Vegas with a woman who was all kinds of wrong. I started experimenting drug with drugs, and it was awesome. How did I get my life out of the gutter? Simple. I lucked out. I got an offer to attend a school just like this one. I figured I'd give it a shot. Cheap cafeteria food and a roof over your head. Seven hours a day? Roof over your head for seven hours a day? It was better than what I had going on for me. Although the drugs were still pretty awesome and I had to give them up. So... But yeah, in terms of my long-term prospects, and being able to be employable and have good skills and earn money so that I could go buy more drugs, I had to be at school. I know it can be boring, and the teachers can be jerks, and make you do a lot of stuff you don't like, but that's life. You're gonna meet a lot of boring people, you're gonna meet a lot of jerks, and do a ton of stuff you don't like. Also, not sure I'm such a fan of having the television in the classroom. Um, teachers should be able to instruct without such aids. Um, I mean, it's great when you're rolling around the television uh, because the substitute has to teach the class and doesn't know the material, is unqualified. But in general, teachers should be qualified enough to lead a class without having to rely on a video to do it for them. The first job I got out of school, a bunch of us applied as construction workers. I was the only one with the high school diploma, so they put me in charge. I had no idea how to be a boss and no idea what I was doing, but I learned quickly. It led to my next job and the next one and the next. I all become, they all started because I went to school instead of being crushed by life. So that's why I'm telling you to stay in school. It turned my life around and gave me lots of opportunity and money and drugs and I hope it does the same for you. Just kidding, don't do drugs. Alright, that was inspiring. I had no idea it was such he led such a challenging life. And the way he's dealing with those kids. He's so great. He's a true leader. Such an inspiration for everybody. We wanted to lose, though, right? I mean, we could compliment him, but we want him to lose. He wants us to help him lose. We're gonna insult him. You moron, how dare you give a good speech? I what? You're supposed to mess up and encourage the kids to do drugs. Which, you kinda did, but you, in a very roundabout way. You weren't supposed to actually inspire them to improve their lives. I thought you wanted this campaign to fail. I thought you cared about the campaign above everything else, you know? Because it's a very one-dimensional thing that you're doing. I want the campaign to fail. But not if it means I have to ruin a bunch of kittens' lives. You hired me to help your campaign fail. Now you're giving me contradicting orders. What am I supposed to do? You really mean that, don't you? Yes, I don't think anyone should be treated badly. Again! You're, you're too idealistic. Do you want this campaign to fail or not? Wow, your honesty and openness is really inspiring. I think I understand why you're such a popular candidate now. Yeah, I know I could probably tank the campaign if I was mean and hateful. Like Rover or Thunderpaw. But... I just can't act that way, even if it's just pretend. It's not my personality to be rude. Yeah, you know that stuff I told you about trying to fail earlier? Turns out, yeah, maybe I don't care so much about that. I wish more people were like you, Dr. Nom Noms. Don't sell your sh yourself short. You're a pretty good person yourself. You know, we use the word yourself twice just because we can. At the end of the day, I was conflicted. 
He hired me to sink his campaign. But, you know, maybe I'm not so interested in doing that. He's a good cat. He should be president. If he can fix this country the way he fixed those kittens' lives. Yep. Sure, he's fully qualified. Well, he's, he's probably more qualified than the other candidates, and that's all that matters. What should I do? Should I keep going along with the charade? Or should I stop? This question swirled around in my mind for the first time, as if this has not been something that I've been questioning all along, and this is totally a unique and novel concept. Um, as I begin to write his speech, um, yeah, he swirled around in my mind as I began to write the speech. I guess that doesn't necessarily imply that they weren't previously swirling, or won't be swirling in the future. But, yeah. I don't know, I think this could be expressed a little bit differently, but whatever. We're talking about the Miowa Sharp Claw Society speech. In which Dr. Nom Noms gives a speech, and we see the results of the Miowa primary. I mean, yeah, in school, you know, they tell us, don't do drugs, and here's all the kinds of drugs, and here's how people do them, and don't do it. And by the way, here's how you know, like, which drugs which, and whatever, and... I hear that people who actually participated in those programs are more likely to participate in doing drugs um, than those who didn't participate in the programs, so... Whatever. On the other hand, I think the ads that said don't do drugs were interesting enough. Alright, Dr. Nom Noms wanted a two minute speech. He wanted it to be a bad speech. What can I do for Miowa? Let me see. I am elected president. I will do everything I can to help the people of Miowa and all the people of this great nation. I have spent the last several months listening to people, learning about their hopes and dreams, their desires and fears. I know what they want from the government, and I intend to give it to them, because they deserve the chances that I have been given. I want to ensure that every child in America grows up to see a good future, a clear future, a future so bright I gotta wear shades. Hmm, actually that's a good speech. Short and to the point. It sounds like how Dr. Nom Noms feels. He does care about other people. Oh, but I'm supposed to write a bad speech. What should I do? Let's try to rewrite it. Alright, take two action. If I'm elected president, I promise to punch babies and steal everyone's Halloween candy. I will mercilessly taunt all my political opponents. And since the cable news is on my side, they will pretend that I'm being fair and balanced, when in reality I'm acting like a four-year-old. That will distract everyone from many faults and failures, because I am a loser. This is wrong. I can't write a speech like that, it's not sincere, it's not Dr. Nom Noms at all. <sighs> well, decided to give him the speech I'd already written. Wasn't what he asked me for, but it was the truth. And, you know, who taught me that the truth is always best? Dr. Nom Noms. The guy who's a serial liar who got involved in politics, deceiving people just so he could sell his book. He's our paragon of virtue. Yeah, I should just follow his example, you know? It took exactly one minute to deliver the speech. And it went over well. Big donors applauded loudly. By contrast, DJ Nibble's speech went on for 17 minutes. By the time he was done, a lot of people were bored. Or texting or playing games on their phones. The rest of the dinner went well, except for the time Frisky tried to hit on one of the waitresses. He might be a good politician, but he'd be a terrible boyfriend. Uh, there was also a strange moment when someone tried to ask Rover a question about dogs. But they were a friend of offending people, 
So they introduced a dog who introduced another dog who asked the question. That was awkward. Next day, we didn't do any campaigning. Nom Nom said that he wanted to give his staff a break after all their hard work. Reality, though, he didn't want to help his chances with last minute voters. Um, so, I don't know, is he still out there, like, on his own and stuff? Also, if the donors gave him a lot of money, can I get a raise? Lizzie and I went to the movies together. After dinner, went to the office area to see the election results. Being the Miowa election results. I've never watched live election results before. You haven't? No. Nope. Grew up on the West Coast. It's usually the election's usually over before we get to vote, you know? It's almost like our votes don't count. Well, it's a state election. It'll be different, because it's just for this state. I take it you heard the good news. Oh, what happened? Here, let me turn on the TV. 80% of the district's reporting. We have a clear winner. Frisky has taken Miowa with a commanding 38% of the vote. Because you know, we're good at statistics. We lost. Yay! All we have to do is lose the other primaries and they'll concede to the front runner. Hang on. There's more to this story. Independence. A second place winner. 26% of the vote is Dr. Nom Nom was expected to get as low as 13% according to some polls. Yeah, that's not vague at all. Second, ooh. Yeah, you're only 5% behind Frisky. No, that's bad, we're trying to lose. How did I double my poll numbers? Well, you know, you're a good candidate. People like you. Oh, is that why you wrote a good speech for me yesterday? I mean, I asked you to write a bad one. Surprised by it, you know? Uh, don't worry. I'm not mad. I just, I just thought you'd be a little harsher. So most employees try to make their bosses look bad? I can't make you look bad. You're too nice. Yeah, you're a good candidate. You shouldn't be trying to fail. You should try harder. You know? Um. People in Mioa clearly believe that you can win the election. I believe it too. Why don't you go all out and try your hardest? Uh, but, you know, it's too much responsibility. We want, want somebody in office who, um, you know, wasn't ready to accept the responsibility of being the president. You afraid? You being a scaredy cat? No, 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 I, I just can't be president, you know? I can't. Stop trying to encourage me. I asked you to fail this campaign, or help me fail it. And I'd like it if you cooperated, please? Wow, he's pretty nice even when he's angry. You know, you have to do better persuading than that. What's wrong with you, knucklehead? You're a great candidate and you shouldn't quit. Don't call me a knucklehead. Stop being rude to me and maybe I'll fire you and replace you with Lizzie. Yeah, promotion! Maybe you'll double my salary. Sorry, I was rude, but I still want an answer. Why are you so angry about the favorable election results? I'm afraid of winning the election. The uh, pressure is almost too much for me. If I win the primary, it's only going to get a hundred times worse. I never asked to be in this position, you know, except for the time that I did. But yeah, I just wanted to sell my book. I wasn't looking for a career. Not like a career politician or something. I don't want the responsibility, I just want the money. And uh, now I've got the money, and there's no going back. Sometimes when I look in the mirror, I have no idea how I got here, and, or where I'm going. I want to go back to the way things were before I, like, you know, things happen. Don't be sad. You're rich. I mean, we're scared too. Yeah, we have no idea what we're doing here either. You're not the only one. Yeah, we can do it. You too. Thank you. It's second place in the election, and here we are, practically crying about how scared we are. It's okay, it's fine to be honest about your emotions, better to do that than to hide them. The other one who told us how important honesty is. Yeah, it's not like this entire campaign's based on a lie or something. Truth is, I haven't been entirely honest with you. 
There's another reason why I have to lose. I, I you know, I've been sworn to secrecy. I'm gonna tell you that I've been sworn to secrecy and I have this other reason, but not tell you what it is. Oh, but now we really want to know. Tell you what, when it doesn't matter anymore, after we lose, at that point, I'll tell you. Now, no more feeling sorry for ourselves. We're still going to lose this as a team. You know, we'll stick with you, you know? Let's go celebrate our victory. Yay! <laughs> or maybe Clonazepam. That's clever. We unveil our plan to lose the new Clasher debate. Like New Hampshire, but... Anyway, the mood in the office changed after that. Lizzie and I were more dedicated to Dr. Nom Noms and his cause. We still think he should win the general election. We're not going to sabotage his plans or anything like that. Um, I trust Dr. Nom Noms. If he says he can't win the election, he can't win it. Still, I wonder why. You know, he told us he's got the secret... He's not going to tell us until it's all over. I guess the only way to find out is to lose the election. And I have a great plan. We're totally going to lose. Alright, what's the plan? We're going to go to New Colossier. That's the also location of the next debate. What do we do there? We're going to lose the debate so badly, people will talk about it years from now. Alright, what's the plan? could go after Thunderpaw. Meanest cat, the one most likely to attack me. Interesting. Go on. With every single question, you'll ignore the topic and use it as an excuse to insult Thunderpaw. Eh, I don't think he's gonna like that. You know, I don't think he likes anything. Um, when you bring things to a peak, and he's just about blown his top over a barrage of constant insults, you throw a hairball. No. Yes. Can you imagine a candidate throwing a hairball on stage during a national debate? Their campaign would be finished, ruined over and done with. It's so brilliant. I'm not sure I could insult him over and over again. I'm sure he's kind of brash, but I don't think he's that bad, you know? You can always practice on me. Yeah, try saying... You're ugly and stupid and your policies are so out of date that Truman administration just called and asked if you would stop copying them. I really like your hair. Thank you, that's so nice of you to say. Wait, that's not an insult. That's a compliment, you dummy. Oops, I gave you the wrong prompt. Try again. Say, you're ugly and stupid and your policies are so out of date, the Truman administration just called and asked if you would stop copying them. Uh, you're ugly and... President Truman thinks your policies are great. You're pretty bad at this insult thing. That's one of the things I like about you. Well, let's forget about insults for now. Just focus on doing a hairball on stage at the debate. Alright. I don't suppose you're willing to bathe yourself on stage. Uh, nope. Alright, hairball it is. Alright. Yeah, the only way to prepare for the debate is not to prepare. So, I mean, it hasn't worked so well so far because, you know, the other candidates aren't prepared either, so... Whatever. It's not like this debate matters or anything. Hello, and welcome to the Sharp Claw Debate, being held in preparation for the new Clawsher primary. Our debaters tonight are DJ Nibbles. Yay! Thunderclaw. I'm gonna win, and tonight I'm gonna tell you why. Frisky! Uh, Frisky? Frisky? Sorry, I was doing a bit of, um, last minute preparation with a beautiful Scottish. You're a tail chasing pervert, Frisky. 
You wouldn't be saying that if you'd seen her. You also have Rover. Yo. Vote for me. I'll make sure Dagonia doesn't invade our country and annex our litter boxes. Dr. Nom Noms. I have no idea how I got this far in the race. And some other nondescript cat. Uh, my name's Kale. Some people think I stand out from the rest of the crowd because, you know, I'm just bad. It's hard to keep track of all the candidates when they're so similar. The only candidate you need to know is me, Thunderpaw, the winner. Everybody else is a loser. And yet, and yet not the winner at Miowa. I won that state with my youthful energy and enthusiasm. We're leading a kitten revolution. You gotta be kidding me. You're so inexperienced. You probably don't know how to tie your shoes correctly. Never mind that none of us are wearing shoes. Um, I'd like to point out that I have also no experience. I've never run for office before. You're saying that you'll bring a fresh perspective to the presidency because you're an outsider. Oh, uh, sure, whatever. It's for all the candidates, and it's an easy one. Who is your biggest political inspiration? That's an excellent question, and I have a truly an appreciation for all the questions everywhere. Another excellent question, which I wish to discuss. The debate went on for another 20 minutes. It was very debatey. I'm sorry, I don't know how to describe debates, and apparently we cut out the debate, which would have been a really fun thing to have in the game, but we, you know, there's so much going on already, we don't have to necessarily go through all this. First section was about foreign policy, and they all talked about countries I had never heard of before. Dr. Nom Noms tried to mess up with his answer by purposely confusing furance and permany, but the moderator corrected him and turned it into a better answer. In fact, that happened a lot. The moderator would comment on Dr. Nom Nom's answers and improve them. I was uh, surprised. Aren't moderators supposed to, you know, like, be fair and balanced? That's not the first time that happened this season, either. Uh, let's see. Yeah, legalizing catnip is pretty important. He could have just gone with that as his platform, honestly. With the fancy furball debate, the moderator was really nice to the party favorite the entire time. They asked easy questions about the weather. They were really nice to all the other candidates, or really nasty to all the other candidates, and asked them difficult questions, like naming all the amendments in backwards order. I think it's because uh, the party favorite funds that television network. Or because companies and people who withdraw their support from the party tend to get subjected to the government investigations and heavy audits. Yeah, the fancy furballs just say that's a coincidence, but still... Just like the fancy furball favorite, Dr. Nom Nom is just more or less coasting through the debate. Scratch soon. West Virginia. West Virginia and Nevada and Clarson City. That's all the capitals there are. Good job, DJ Nibbles, but you're supposed to answer in the form of a question. Well, but I named all 50 state capitals. Give me some credit. Now, Dr. Nomnims, do you like cheeseburgers and soda? No, they are the spawn of Satan. I mean, yes, I do like cheeseburgers and soda. A true American. Nothing rich or fancy about this cat. He's just your average Tom. I'll ask the cat on the end to perform some mathematical derivatives. You know, because I know how to ask those kinds of questions. Uh, my name's Kale. Yeah, Dr. Nom Noms is totally winning the debate. You have to stop the momentum. He's got to throw the hairball right now. And no. I decided to sit and do nothing. You know, I guess... Dr. Nom Nom's wasn't helping him wasn't on my priority list that day. Must have figured out on his own that he's doing well, because it wasn't long afterward that he launched his attack. Dr. Nom Nom's a loser, and he's not even a real doctor. 
She doesn't deserve to be here on the main stage. She should be at the kids table with all the junior senators. Oh wait! He isn't a junior senator, he's a nobody! Dr. Nom Noms, your response to this vicious, unprovoked attack. This mean tirade shows the Thunderpaws a classless moron. I have one thing to say, which will show you my true personality. I... I... <gasps> no! My hair! Thunderpaws bald? Oh, I'm hideous! Ah, it's horrible. The crowd broke into an uproar. The moderator tried to regain control, but it was impossible. The TV network cut to commercial. Oh no, it's such a scandal. Thunderpaw loses more than just his hair, and Lizzie reveals her secret crush. Welcome back to the debate. If you're just joining us, this has been a momentous occasion. The great and wonderful Dr. Donovan has exposed Thunderpaw as a fraud and a phony. Ah! Oh, it doesn't matter that I lied about my toupee, I'm still a young, wonderful cat. Not an aging has been who's trying to hide his own baldness. Are you sure? Nope. Get off the stage, you phony! Feel like can't lie. Go home. All right. I'm not a liar. I just need a different toupee, and I'm gonna go cry. Burst into tears and ran away from the debate. Good. Now with the phony gone, let's continue. Maybe people remember me now. Quiet, Shale. The next question is for Frisky. Yep, Thunderpaw came dead last, all because he's bald. Two days later, he dropped out and started a new career as a used car salesman. As for Dr. Nom Nom's, his popularity exploded and he won Mioa with 43% of the vote. Frisky came in second with 29. Wait a second. We already had the Mioa election. You think you mean the new Klosher election? I'm just saying. I can't believe it! The plan to root, lose the race backfired. Yeah, I thought the hairball stuff was totally gross. How are we supposed to know the one the other cats was wearing a burpees? Um, doesn't matter. The important thing is that I'm the front runner. Frisky can still take this from us. He came in first to Miwa and second uh, this time around. Yeah, he's trying to find a first lady. And South Carolina is the state he pulls the worst in. Yeah, we need to find a way to ensure that you lose the next primary. I don't think we have a choice. We need to create a career-ending scandal. Like, creating a fake presidential campaign in order to sell books? No, no, no. Something really bad. Like, locking the Speaker of the Meows on litter. Or stealing other people's speeches. Speech gate. Or, yeah, whatever. We call it Golden Gate Gate. Um, yeah, we need to be careful. Not something that will destroy my political career. But, you know, not ruin my reputation forever. So, yeah. That thing I've said about trying to lose didn't actually mean it. We only want to lose if we don't have to actually destroy our political career. Because, you know, I should. I'm probably going to publish another sequel. Or publish a sequel to my book. So I don't want to destroy my political career just yet. What if people learned you had a secret wife? Yeah, that, that'd be perfect. Because, you know, that's a real thing. I know the perfect person for the job. I will be your secret wife. Oh. Oh. Don't you think we'd make a cute couple? Uh, that'd be so romantic. Uh, well... I didn't actually think about that until selecting that option. 
I can't do that. I don't even have real life. Unbelievable. Yep, yep, yep. He's my boss. I can't have a crush on my boss. Um, let's end the conversation. We can all go home and think about it some more. Tomorrow, everyone can bring a list of five potential scandals. And then we pick the best one. And I'll come up with a schedule for what we do in South Carolina. We have new donations? Since Thunderpaw's out of the race, all his donors got their money back. Because, you know, apparently the political process isn't that corrupt anymore. Someone invested in our campaign. Um. Ah, well, thanks. Sure. That's cool. It took me over two hours to go through all the investor paperwork. He'd received four million dollars. Maybe he did have a legitimate chance of winning the campaign. Also, if he's got that kind of money, can't we, like, I don't know, multiply our salaries by 40 or something? Just saying. I was ready to eat. Lizzie had other ideas. Uh, do you mind if I ask you something personal? What's up? It's Dr. Nom Nom's. This campaign, I feel really bad that we're trying to lose. He's so nice, it feels wrong to ruin his campaign, even though that's what he's paying us for. No, I, I mean more than that. I... I have a crush on Dr. Nom Noms. It's so wrong, a girl and a cat, there's no room for a future like that. But it's how I feel. He's really special, you know? That guy is so sweet and sensitive, he meets thousands of people a week, he the sense he honestly cares. All my life I waited for a guy who honestly cares about me, you know? What happened with Johnny? I thought he cared. But, but I was wrong. What do you think? Is it totally crazy for me to be attracted to Dr. Nala's personality? That is revolting and you should stop. Quit your job and stay away from Dr. Nom Noms. Oh, you hate him that much. No, I, I mean, I like him. He'd be a perfect boyfriend. I mean, even husband material. So you get it after all. There's just one problem. We're fighting over the same guy? No, he's our boss. You can't do that with, like, a business partner. Not getting all weird and awkward. Uh, I think if there were an awkward situation... He'd be a nice, usual self, but still. There's a reason people don't date their bosses. Besides, we're human and he's a cat. We could always get a cat who transforms you. Is that like a coffee? No, we get turned into cats. That's how cats became super smart in the first place. Now that she mentioned it, I remember hearing something about that. Back in the day, scientists were experimenting with human cat processes accidentally created the new race of super cats who could think and act on a human level. At first, the only thing the cats said was, whatever, I don't care. The scientists thought they had made a mistake somewhere, but no. Turns out that the cats just didn't really care about anything the scientists did or said. Super cat genes spread like wildfire throughout the world to the point where the majority of cats can now talk and think, and obviously run for president. Alright, I've heard of the super cat gene, but never heard of the whatever you're talking about there. It's a transformation thing, because cat brains and human brains are so similar, you can do a human to cat transplant, and vice versa. Um, yeah, isn't that dangerous? Yeah, at first it was. But now, they do over 200 of them per year. That's like one every couple days. Oh, so we could become cats, or Dr. Nom Noms could become human? Huh, I wonder which would be better. Human Dr. Nom Noms would be pretty hot, but I've always wanted to be able to see in the dark. Huh, well, I did have one objection still. He's still our boss, Lizzie. Plus, he's under a lot of pressure right now. Maybe you should worry about relationships after the election's over. Actually, here's a thought. 
What if Dr. Nomnoms became human? He wouldn't be able to be president anymore. He would lose for sure then. Yeah, you're right as usual. Still, wouldn't it be fun to become a cat? Everybody, everybody wants to be a cat. Totally not an aristocrat's reference. Dr. Nom Noms picks a VP, and Lizzie makes a really bad decision. I looked up more info about the transformation. It came from the Latin, meaning cat transformation. Wait, cat means cat? I don't believe that. The name was coined by lazy scientists who wanted to make themselves look fancy by using Latin. You know, considering that like the Spanish word for cat is gato, I mean, it almost makes sense, but no, the, the Latin word for um, cat is philus, F-E-L-U-S. It's not cat. Whatever. The fir first transformation, it's been politicians, believe it or not. After humans were banned from politics, Lifetime politicians from old political families turn themselves into cats so they could run for office again. But they rendered themselves infertile, and since cats don't live as long as humans, they died out pretty quickly. Today the process is safe. In fact, it's common for ex-presidents to turn themselves into humans so they can enjoy a longer retirement. But it's irreversible. Not non-reversible, irreversible is good English. If I turned into a cat, my human body would be destroyed. Would I be willing to do that? To never be human again? I wasn't sure. And you know, I didn't have to make that decision. Still, thinking that much about animals gave me an idea. A brilliant idea. Morning, Trillion. You look cheerful today. That's because I found a way to solve our problems. Sort of. Our problem is that you're too nice, too likable, too cat. You stand out from the others due to your honesty and integrity. There's no way to ruin the campaign without ruining you in the process. So, what do we do? Um, we add a new member. We add a new member to the campaign team. Someone guaranteed to bring us failure. We. Let's hire a new campaign manager. We need a new campaign manager, only because I'm too good at my job, so I quit. Really? Nah, just kidding. We need a bad vice president. Yeah, if we pick a really bad cat as vice president, it'll sink the campaign. People refuse to vote for me for fear of that cat becoming president. Brilliant! You fi figured out how to sink the campaign while keeping my reputation intact. You know, because nominating a bad person as vice president totally sinks your ticket. Just saying. I'm not finished. Oh yeah, Felis. F-E-L-I-S. You're right. Oh. You have a cat in mind for the position? Who is it? Is that crazy cat who wants to replace all the cars with large slingshots? Not a cat. A human? I can't pick a human as my vice president. It says no humans can run for office. Yeah, but it doesn't forbid other animals. I was thinking you could pick bunnies. They mostly just hop around and chew things, you know? That's the idea. If you pick a non sentient animal as your VP, it's likely to ruin the campaign. Either that, or you could pick a rock or a chair or something like that. It'd be fun to pick a ball of yarn as a VP. I suppose bunnies would be best. At least it'll look like I'm trying. Alright. Oh, ha. <laughs> okay. I guess point taken. You can actually sink a campaign by picking a VP. Um. Whatever. Not that 
that was necessarily the reason. But it's arguable, is the point. Good. In the meantime, I'll go through my emails. There's a little front page article about me in the Colossus Street Journal this morning. I've got a lot of fallout after from that. Uh, isn't that Lizzie's job? Yeah, but she hasn't shown up. Huh. She left the hotel room an hour before I did. I figured she was getting an early start on work. Well, call her, figure out where she is. Alright, we will do. First, I need to go to the pet store and buy some bunnies. How much money do you... I stopped talking when a strange cat entered the office. We've had our fair share of unusual visitors, which is why we keep the door locked. I don't know how this cat got inside. Meow? Hello? Hello there, who are you? I'm mostly fine, my tail... Or how are you, or who are you, or whatever. I'm mostly fine, my tail hurts a lot more than I expected. And my vision's still adjusting, but overall, the surgery went... Oh... Surgery? What are you talking about? Uh-oh. No, please tell me she... It's me! Lizzie! I got a Cadu Transformacho! You did what? She did! Lizzie, you turned yourself into a cat? Yeah, I wanted to be more like Dr. Nanoms. That way it would help the campaign. Uh... Wait. How does being a cat help the campaign? You only did this because you have a huge crush on him. Also, why are we trying to help the campaign? Uh, what? Oh, not true. It's a lot easier for the Nomsi ship to sail, now that we're the same species, but that wasn't what I was thinking. Uh, when did you do this? Like, this morning? Didn't you talk to anyone about it? Like, your parents? Why did they have to know? It's my life, and I do what I want. So, you get to ruin your life. But any thought to how it'll affect the people around you? How selfish. It's a big deal. If I want to be a cat for a few weeks, so what? I can always go back to being a human if I don't like it. Uh, no. You can't. It's irreversible. Uh, what? Didn't you read the paperwork they made you fill out? No, it was like five pages. It was boring. And, you know, I'm just like dumb and careless and all that. So, so mad at Lizzie, I can barely speak. Dr. Nan now stepped in. Lizzie, I understand this is a big change in your life. I'll be here to support you. And if you want any drugs, I have some left over. Just check the supply cabinet. Oh, you will. Yeah, if you need help adjusting to being cat, I can try to help. See? This is how a good friend is supposed to react to the good news. You are a cat! How is that not completely turning your life around? Also, what kind of a good friend are you? It's a big change, but you'll get used to it. Wanna hear me purr? No. No. Sure, why not? Purr. Purr. That's not purring. All you're doing is saying the word purr. Do like this. Ugh. Let me try. That sounds like a motorcycle. I did it! Thank you, Dr. Nomnoms. You have so much to teach me about my new body. She sidled up next to Dr. Nomnoms like a molly in the heat, cuddling up to a top. It was horrifying. All right, go for it, Lizzie. So I let her steal my one chance of true love. After all, this is her chance of true love too. That's why I decided to quit the campaign, and chase my lifelong dream of owning a yogurt stand in Florida. I ended up growing old and alone. I became one of those creepy cat ladies. Wait, I can't let that be my future. I need to stop this. Lizzie, show some restraint. 
Sorry, I don't know how to control my new body. Never mind that I went through the whole cat transformation thing to like sail the ship. You're staying with me for the rest of the day. We're going to the computer store. But I thought you were going to the pet shop. Yeah, but now I need to buy a cat-sized computer for Lizzie here. Oh, right, I can't type with these silly paws. Hey, while we're there, can we get a saucer of milk? You know, at the computer store. I always wanted to drink out of one of those. I tried doing it as a human. I accidentally fell and I broke my nose. Uh, no. No, we can't do that. Sorry. Don't have the money for it. Uh, eventually I calmed down. She's my friend. Even though she didn't ask me about this, she made this big decision, didn't ask anyone, it was a really selfish decision. But apparently we're still friends even though she's trying to steal my true love. Um, could this be a thing that tears our friendship apart? I'm not sure. Maybe I should take myself out of the running and just let Lizzie date him. After all, she gave up her entire life to be with him. She clearly likes him more than I do. In which everything backfires. Badly. Alright. Hopefully we're in the home stretch here. In any event, we're coming up on election number three, I assume. It's starting. This is Olaf, the Norwegian forest cat, reporting live outside Charleston International Airport for Animal World News. Dr. Nomnoms has recently landed and plans to give a speech of monumental importance. As you probably know, Dr. Nomnoms has recently shot up to the top of the presidential race after the exit of his competitor Thunderpaw. He not only leads the sharp claws in the polls, but is rated favorably against the fancy furballs. Our research shows him 23 points ahead of the FF frontrunner Fuzzy Tompkin Rubs. Or Fuzzy Tummy Rubs. Um, his lead against Sleepy McWilliams is 45 points, which is almost insurmountable. With such good readings, it's only natural that all eyes are on Nom Noms today. And unless I'm mistaken, we're about to begin. Hello, everyone! Are you ready? Good! Introducing Dr. Nom Noms! Hello, welcome to all you in South Catalina, and thank all of you watching at home. I have come here not to campaign in the upcoming primary, but to tell you some important information. For several hundred years, our country was run by humans. No one dreamed of giving the cats the equal right to vote much less the right to become president. And yet, cats are not the only ones to be oppressed. There are many other animals who have never had the chance to run for office. That is why today I'm gonna to make history by choosing, for the first time ever, a bunny rabbit as my vice presidential match. Say hello to Flopsy and her lovely husband, Bugs. Aww. Uh, can they talk? Nope. But, you know, sometimes they make little grunting sounds when you feed them treats. Which one's Flopsy and which one's Bug? Flip Flopsy and which one's Bugs? Flopsy's the female. Any other questions? I see. Clearly you're amazed at the fact that rabbits will finally get representation at the level of federal government. Screw dogs. Rabbits are the way of the future. On their recommendation, I've decided to increase funding for carrots and write a bill banning the sale of bunny slippers. It is the first time that I will sign into law if elected president. First thing I will sign into law if you elect me. They couldn't believe it. It was great. The campaign was going to crash and burn now. Yeah! Alright. Huh. Lizzie and Dr. Nom Noms were closer than ever, now that they were cats. I felt a twinge of jealousy, but it's for the best. 
She deserved to be happy with him. You know, I would still be happy knowing my two best friends were together. Because apparently Dr. Nom Nom's is my best friend now. Um, oh, actually that's the dialogue. Never mind. So much for me being sarcastic when that's actually, you know, the next line. Trillion? Trillion, what's wrong? Sorry, spaced out for a moment. It's just, you two look so great together. Thanks. You told her that we're a couple. No, she didn't say anything. I, I could just tell. Well, officially we're not an official couple, but we did decide to go on a date and see where it goes. That's stupid. You two are stupid. Everybody's stupid. You mean we should skip dating and go straight to having kittens? Uh, no. She's joking, right? Uh, yeah, obviously I was joking. I'm a little worried how this is going to affect Lizzie, though. Dating a high-profile pre presidential candidate during a campaign? She's going to be attacked by reporters. Not for long, the campaign's tanked. Yeah, it's over. I saw the early news, and they all predict that you're going to lose. Finally, it's at an end. We're pulling it a tenth of what... Um... Trillion, is something wrong? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. It's... no, that's not... no. Dr. Nom Noms is the second most trending topic on litter after It's Bunny Time. I think everyone's happy you picked a rabbit as your partner. Yup. You should have picked Thunderquad. Just saying. Wait, how's that possible? You said the news programs predicted I would lose. They did, but turns out that news stations aren't qualified at what they do. You know, like, interpreting facts without having actual experts. But, you know, I guess the people in media have different ideas about what they want to see from government. Um, you know, that people actually get to vote and express their actual concerns and stuff. No, let me see the results. No, how could you do this to me, Trillian? You said that you would ruin my campaign. I'll probably be the first cat to serve the maximum term length of ten years. You know, if they don't let pass the law for me to serve longer. Sorry. I'm sorry, too, because I like you, Trillian. I hate to have to do this. Trillion, you're fired. There's no room for you on the campaign anymore. No, you can't do that. It's not her fault. Yeah, I know. But ever since you joined the campaign, I've become more popular. If I want to lose, I've got to get rid of you. And I'm going to do that in a humane way by firing you, as opposed to, you know... Um dropping you off a cliff or something like that. This is the more ethical way. Wife always tries to buy you into buying more rabbits. When she comes... <laughs> uh, yeah, people do like rabbits. I'm sorry. I don't understand. You make such a good president. Why are you trying to sink your campaign? I told you I don't have a choice. No, you didn't tell me. You just say your personal secret. Your campaign is built on a foundation of lies and secrets. Although they did promise you would eventually tell me. Truth is, I haven't been entirely honest with you. There's another reason I have to lose. I can't say it's private. I've been sworn to secrecy. You know, when it doesn't matter anymore, once we lose the election, I'll tell you. Can you tell us... Can't you tell your big secret to Trillian, you know, since she's off the campaign? You're right. Trillian deserves to know. And I'm actually going to tell her right now, despite saying earlier that I wasn't going to say anything until after the election. Because you're making this awkward. 
But, yeah. Bye, Lizzie. Can't tell you. Mwah. Alright, what is it? Why are you trying to lose? I was ordered to lose. Who ordered you to lose? Socks. The head of the Sharp Claw political party. The head of your political party ordered you to lose the election. A month after my campaign began, I was summoned to a meeting with Socks. Top secret, I wasn't allowed to tell anyone. Not even my campaign manager at the time. But in a small room, Socks didn't waste any time. He told me I could never become president. He didn't say. Uh, all he said there was no chance at all that he would pick me to represent the Sharp Claws in the general election. And he has the weight to back up that threat. Even if all the delegates support me, he can go against their wishes and pick someone else. So, you know, that's why I've got to lose. It doesn't make much sense, but neither does the Electoral College, so... Yeah, got to pick somebody else. Backroom politics? Oh my goodness, that's so scandalous and has never been done before. No, I don't think that's right. I think they're just trying to fix the election to make sure a particular candidate wins. They're not trying to make sure I lose. Sox doesn't care who wins as long as it's not me. Oh, I don't... I'm sorry, I misread that. I don't think they're trying to fix the election. They just want to make sure that somebody other than me wins. He even said he'd pick a fancy furball over me. Do you know why there's such animosity there? Nope. So now you know, that's why I have to lose. Wow, can't believe it. I think you're making that up. I can't believe it. In which... We make it to the National Convention. Walked out of the restaurant in a daze. The leader of the Sharp Claws had a personal vendetta against Dr. Nom Noms. It's hard to think anyone could have a vendetta against Dr. Nom Noms. He's such a nice cat. Aside from the fact that he fired me, but... You no, know, he did give me a nice severance package, so that was pretty cool. Lizzie was promoted to head campaign manager, and the first thing she tried to do was attack me, believe it or not. You know, Dr. Nom Nom's campaign manager fired and replaced under mysterious circumstances. But it didn't work, because a celebrity had said something stupid earlier that day. And, yeah, news media completely bypassed our scandal, so. There were non-stop interviews with offended parties, minor MewTube stars, Clawlywood insiders, and others who weren't involved or affected at all. The protest got so large the next day, a celebrity made a public apology, saying that they were joking with the offensive remark. <laughs> this just got people more upset. Eh, whatever. Everybody had a strong opinion about that. It was all revealed to be a hoax in order to advertise the celebrity's newest TV show. None of the major networks reported this fact, because no news story lasts beyond two news cycles. Unless it involves one of the network sponsors. Lizzie tried making up new scandals for Dr. Nom Nom, saying like he got trapped inside a cardboard box for three hours and had to be rescued by the fire department. She claimed his old house had been purchased by mice enthusiasts and he was caught wearing a leash to go out for walks. Walkies? Huh. Lizzie tried to come up with bad places for him to campaign at, like the Anti-Voting League and his own living room. She gave him speeches on irrelevant topics like the best way to play with yard and reprogramming your GPS for fun and for profit. It didn't work. Nothing she tried worked. Dr. Nana's campaign grew stronger and stronger as more cats dropped out. In the end, only three cats made it to the national convention. Dr. Nom Noms, Frisky, and Lincoln Pawby. 
I hadn't heard of Lincoln Paw you before. He's the long shot candidate from Pawwood Island, who decide to run for president just for the fun of it. I used to be an alcoholic. Well, I don't know. Well, I should have a different voice, shouldn't I? I used to be an alcoholic. Lying on the ground near all the time near the wine bottles. Hoping someone would spill a few drops like a lap of milk. Next slide. Then I got into drugs. I got high, literally. I jumped to the top of a shelf and couldn't get down. And it's like, meowch. These intense moments gave me pause. I cleaned myself up, got a fur cut, and went to that Catholic priest at the local cathedral. He gave you taught me the importance of forgiveness and for saying Yao Kopa. He tried to teach me about dogma, but I am afraid of dogma, so it didn't go very well. In conclusion, I'm a nice, normal cat, and I should become president. Thank you very much. Dropped out long ago. Jeez, that catwalk woke up on the wrong side of the pillow this morning. Because, you know, cats apparently wake up on pillows as opposed to in some sort of, like, I don't know, cat bed structure box thing. He's always like that. What are you two doing? We saw you here at the convention, so we decided to say hi. What brings you here? Um, you know, it was a mistake. Well, I just came here by accident. I was looking for a fast food place near my house and found myself wandering into the Sharp Claw National Convention. Silly me. Your house is in another state. That's just like an opinion, man. Alright, I lied. Reality, I came to see you. It's been a long time, and I miss you two. You were my best friends, not to mention the cutest couple in politics. Uh, you didn't tell her? I thought you did. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, we broke up. We went on the one date. Yeah, he's not the one for me. I wish I knew that before turning myself into a cat. What was that? Nothing. I love being a cat. Me, I love it. Um, yeah, Lizzie whispered in my ear. Did you know cats clean themselves with their tongues? It's disgusting. I can't put up with any cats who don't take showers like normal people. I feel your pain, Lizzie. Well, it's great to see you again, Trillian. We'll have to talk after the interrogation's over. Okay. Not to a darkened room uh, door. Darkened room door down the hall. Let me try to parse this. Um, he nodded toward a room. Nor nodded toward a door, the darkened room down the hall, where a grumpy cat was questioning the candidates. Scrupulous spending and cover-ups. How do we know it won't continue? Look, I know I have a history of chasing females, both cat and human, but I can control it. I swear I just slipped up once or twice. I'd say 18 sexual harassment lawsuits more than just once or twice. If you're serious about winning the election, I recommend that you be neutered. Uh, no. That sucks the leader of the Sharp Claw National Committee. Wait, he's the one who told you to come here? Yup. You couldn't talk about socks aloud, not in front of Lizzie. Now that I've seen him for myself, it made a little more sense that he have a vendetta against Dr. Anonymous. He seemed to have a vendetta against everyone. Hey, what was that? What if that was it? Maybe he threatened every candidate to drop out of the race. As some kind of weird test? Seems like he's the, he's the sort of cat who might try that. Um, but once Dr. Nanas went up, it became clear that Sox was gunning for him. 
the political experience, no chance of winning the election. Uh, actually, you know, if you pay attention to the numbers, I won most of the states in the primaries. Most, but you didn't win them all. And like 30% of Sharp Claws voted. If you can't generate enough excitement to get them to the polls, we're gonna lose. Hey, dude, that's not fair. General election generally gets four times as many voters as the primaries do. Oh, I'm sorry, did I hurt your precious little feelings? Do you need to sit in the corner and mew for a bit? Because we're not talking about history, we're talking about you and your complete inability to win. You're an experienced politician, one who can work inside the system. I'm not an idiot who rose by throwing hairballs at the other candidates. Oh. Poor Nom Noms, it looks like he's gonna lose. Isn't that good? He wants to lose. That way, he's not really fighting back against Sox's criticism. You know, it still seems unfair though, because, like, Dr. Nom Noms won the primaries, so he should make it to the general election. I don't care if the campaign was fake, he's a good candidate, he deserves to win. Um, but how do we get him past this final hurdle? Um,. Let's buy him some coffee. We could really use the caffeine to keep up his energy. I'll sneak into the room and talk to Socks. I knew I shouldn't do this. Interrupting the proceedings is probably a really bad idea. One that could result in jail time or worse. But I couldn't stand by and watch as Dr. Nom Noms lost the nomination. Stop. Stop the question. I have something important to say. We give a great speech and learn the truth behind Sox's anger. Chapter 9 All eyes were on me as I opened my mouth and began to speak. Just hire dogs to throw socks in the river, tied to a rock. Oh, you mean socks like the cat. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure that worked just great. This questioning's a fraud, perpetrating against the fair and gentle Dr. Nanams. Trillion, what are you doing? You all noticed it, right? Sox is being unfair to Dr. Nanoms. That's because Sox has already chosen his candidate. He's just going through the motions at this point. Get out now. Okay, bye. <laughs> Are you crazy? I can't leave now. I need to help Dr. Nanoms. No, I won't allow you to take this election away from him. He's the best candidate and you know it. He's inspired so many people, touched so many lives, and he's the most popular candidate of either party. Yet you're going to reject his candidacy and replace him with Frisky, aren't you? That is none of your concern. It's my concern. I'm an American citizen, and it's a concern for all Americans. They get the best president possible. Or, as some might say, the best possible president. And that means Dr. Nam Nams. Please, please, Socks, don't pick anyone else. Dr. Nom Noms is the clear winner. Enough. I recognize this unimportant, faceless wretch. You used to be Dr. Nom Noms' campaign manager, correct? And here you are trying to save his campaign at the last second. Pathetic. This campaign hasn't failed. You failed. You failed the entire country. Sox glared at me. I glared back at him. Dr. Nom Noms tried pulling me aside, but I didn't budge an inch. Very well. I add the end the questioning of the third candidate, Dr. Nom Noms. All the candidates come forward. So awesome. I'm stoked to be here. I hope I win. I hope I win. I hope I win. Dr. Noms didn't say anything. He just looked at me, sadness in his eyes. 
I've questioned all the candidates and reviewed the election results. It's now my duty to serve as arbiter and decide which of you becomes our party's official candidate. I would like to pick Frisky as the winner. Ugh, I lost, not cool. I won, yeah, wait until I tell my secret girlfriend. No, you can't pick Frisky. What were you thinking? Get out of here. There's things you don't understand. It's impossible for me to pick Dr. Nom Noms as the candidate. Why not? He deserves to win. This isn't about fairness or who deserves to win the most. It's about legalities. And it's illegal for me to choose Dr. Nom Noms. But, wait, what? Why? Start moving his tail rapidly back and forth. The rules say you can't choose someone who is a member of the opposing political party or someone who's ineligible to be president. Neither of those rules apply to me. There's another rule. Family members and employees of the Arbiter are ineligible for nomination. It's designed to prevent cronyism and nepotism. But, Troy, but Dr. Nanos doesn't work for you. No, he doesn't. But, Dr. Nom Noms is my son. What? What? <laughs> Nani? I spent the first four years of my life living in alleyways. Mom tried her hardest to get us upgraded from street cats to house cats, and even took a second job and went on welfare. But it didn't work. Nothing did. Why not? I have nine brothers and sisters. It was a huge litter. Too much for one cat to carry. My dad wasn't around. I've never even met him. Father who abandoned Dr. Nanos and left them a family of orphans? That was you? Yes, that was me. You ruined his life as a kitten, and now you're trying to ruin his life as a cat. You are horrible, Socks. I'm not proud of what I did, but I had to do it. If people knew I had kittens with an alley cat, I never would have risen to the position I hold today. Position where you sacrifice your son's life just to hold on to power? You suck. No, Trillian, don't say that. Socks may be awful, but he's still my father. All my life, I've dreamed of meeting my father, hearing his story, getting to know him, learning why, why he left us. I ran the scenario through my head a thousand times. Sometimes we'd be friends. Other times we'd be enemies. I never expected that my father would prevent me from becoming president of the United States of America. Never. Sock. No. Dad. You're obviously too afraid to do the right thing here, so... I will. I forgive you for what you did. I'm glad to learn the truth. I honestly don't want to see you ever again. Not after this. I'm not finished. I said I would like to declare Frisky as the winner, but he's not. That would be you, son. I abstain from this decision due to a conflict of personal interest. Let the second in command decide who the candidate is. She's not related to any of the nominees. Uh, she got stuck in traffic. Fine. Whatever, let Lincoln Pawee be the arbiter, and I don't care. Awesome! Totally agree. Now now is way more qualified than I am. He should win. Yay! I don't believe it. We won. We got the nomination. Dad, I don't understand. I was trying to lose. Because of him? We're about it later. Smile for the cameras now. Thank you, everyone. I'm honored to be chosen as the next Sharp Law president, or candidate for president of the U.S. 
I promise to do everything in my power to win the election and defeat the fancy furball candidate. Fuzzy Tummy Rubs. A swarm of reporters descended upon Dr. Nomnoms, and I got pushed to the side as they were crowded around asking questions. However, I wasn't the only person standing on the sidelines. Trillion. That's your name, right? I want to talk to you. What about how you try to ruin your son's life? You're being ungrateful to the cat who stepped aside and let you win, Manage. If it wasn't for me, Frisky would be the winner right now. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have been in this situation in the first place. You're a bad cat. Someone should spray you with a water bottle. In fact, I say it's a good thing you abandoned Dr. Nanaz's as a kitten. Allowed him to grow up free from your influence. You've been there, there's no way you would have grown up to be the good cat he is now. You would do well in the harsh world of politics, Trillian. You're really a firecracker. I can see why my son is dating you. We're not dating. You will be. I guarantee it. I don't care what you think. I don't need your permission. Whether I date him or not, it's not your business. Uh, actually, it is my business. Because I'm somehow the leader of the Sharp Claws. Um, despite having stepped aside, um, apparently I'm still in charge. I'm sorry. You must have Dr. Nanas confused with Frisky. Because you'd never take advantage of a woman like me. He's kind and decent, unlike you. You're passionate. You'll be a good mother to my grandkids. Okay, I don't need your pressure to pressure me into dating not notes. In case you haven't noticed, I don't like you. <laughs> Any budget left? Who knows? And blah, whatever. Everyone says they hate me. I'm used to it. Hey. Hey, what are you doing? Don't pull out your phone when I'm talking to you. I was just checking the results of a poll I put up earlier today. And what do you know? Five million people agree that they like you best when you're not talking. Fine. I'll leave you alone. But you should be grateful that I'm not filing charges against you for disrupting today's proceedings. It's very much against the rules. Remember that, in case you're thinking of doing something else to anger me. I eh, just ignored him. Wandered around the convention hall for a while. Lizzie called out to me, but I ignored her. I didn't want to talk to her. The only person I wanted to talk to was Dr. Nomnoms, but he was surrounded by reporters. I remembered the hurt look in his eyes when I interrupted the proceedings. What if he was mad at me for what I did? I couldn't wait to find out. I had to know. Unfortunately, waiting was all that I could do. All right, in which we spend time with Lizzie and all the failed candidates. I found a place that suited my mood. Every cat here was sad and depressed. One cat was doing shots, or at least trying to. His tongue couldn't quite reach far enough to get to the alcohol at the bottom of the glass. Useless failure. What's your problem? I should have won. I should have won the nomination. Oh, is that so? Some fire in the first debate. I interrupted all my opponents and screamed the loudest four times. When that didn't work, I tried saying as much as I could. The person who talks the most wins the debate, after all. Oh, I remember you. You're the cat who was kicked out after the moderator threw the out-of-time bell at your forehead. Yeah, the only state where I got more than 1% of the vote was my home state. I was hoping they'd pick me for the nomination today. Because, you know, that's realistic. Didn't you drop out of the race? They could still pick someone who dropped out. It's not impossible. Uh, actually it is, but whatever. Um, when they picked a candidate, when have they ever done that? 
Never, but there's a first time for everything. Now, give me some booze. Nope. Yeah, fine. I should sober up. Getting drunk could hurt my chances of becoming Nom Nom's vice president. Yeah, you weren't paying attention. He nominated a rabbit. Good luck with that. I lost to a rabbit. Heh, <laughs> go figure. You think you have problems? I have... Hey, baby, how's it going? I've been given the nomination by Sax Socks, and then he took it away. At least I can take comfort in the fact that no one will ridicule me for my failure. Because literally, no one knows who I am. Wait, were you one of the cats who ran for president? I thought you were a delivery boy or something. Yeah, actually, I am. No. A delivery boy? Get us some pizza and soda or something. No, I mean, I'm one of the candidates who lost. Don't you remember me from the debates? Uh, are you the guy whose green room I trashed? Sorry about that, dude. I was just so jazzed up from the debate. I saw my new poll numbers, you know, I just flipped. Because, yeah, polls kind of... I don't know, I wouldn't have been a good president anyway. Oh, you're the maniac who scratched the curtains and ruined the couches. I had to pay to get them replaced. Sorry, I'll reimburse you. You better. The only thing that fell further than my approval rating was my bank account. Practically broke, I even had to sell my toupee. I heard about that. Sold online for huge amounts of money. What a waste. What a failure. And I'm a laughing stock wherever I go. I swear, I could strangle that Dr. Nom Noms. My mom watched the bait and kept asking why I wasn't there. Even she can't tell me from the rest. I'm upset too, Mark. Jason, crying mommy help me? Okay. Oh, okay. Spooked out by that noise. Don't hug me, I'm not your mommy. Whoa, you guys are a little too depressing for me. I think I'll go somewhere else. Like, going home. Hey, baby, let me help escort you to your car. Maybe I can help you feel better. Um, no. Now I'm just disgusted. Yeah, I should probably replace our running mate of the rabbit with... Um, this drunk guy. I decided to leave the losing candidates and walked away. Trillion, there you are. Oh, hey. You've been listening at all? I've been trying to talk to you. Sorry, Lizzie, I've just been lost in thought. I know, I'm shocked too. Dr. Nam's got the nomination. We're gonna win the White House. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, but, you know, we weren't supposed to win, we were supposed to lose. Who cares? Dr. Donos deserves to win. We've been saying this for the last ten chapters. Um, he's gonna make a great president. Oh, that's right, you don't know. The reason Donos was trying to lose the campaign is because Sox threatened him. That's not very- wait, what? Sox are threatening Dr. Donos to drop the campaign? Even though he's secretly Dr. Nom Nom's bum. Hey. More because... More like because he's secretly Dr. Nom Nom's father. How did Lizzie know that? At what point... I guess... Yeah, I don't remember ever learning that. This is too complicated for me, but hey, it's all better now. Well, the socks is the reason Nom Nom's wanted to drop out. That's resolved. You took care of the socks problem. Now there's no reason for Nom Noms to quit. He's going to become more inspired to move forward to the presidency. More importantly, he's going to be super grateful. Either that, or he'll be super angry. I just ruined all of his plans. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. I ruined his life, and not for the first time. It's almost like I hate him. No, no, it's because you love him. That's why you interrupted the proceedings today, isn't it? 
couldn't stand to see him fail. You knew it was wrong to see him lose. Yeah, I, I knew it was wrong, but that doesn't mean I love him. No, I think it does. You made it all the way to the National Convention just to be with him. Uh, well, maybe you're right I have some feelings for him. He's so wonderful, and he clearly cares about me, even after all this time. I saw you go for it. Tell him how you feel. The worst that can happen is he doesn't feel the same way. And you can go back home to your old life. No biggie. It's not like you turned yourself into a cat for this guy or anything. I'm sorry, I must sound so insensitive. I'm talking about how much I like Dr. Nanos when, you know, he rejected you. It's okay, that was two months ago. I've gotten over it by now, it's just... I miss being human. Maybe someday you'll find a new nice cat to settle down with. I've been so focused on my career. You really use a new assistant. Would you like the job? Uh, I'm pretty sure Nom Noms wouldn't be cool with that. Ah, I'm sure he'll hire you back. What do you say? Whatever. I've got nothing else going on. Yeah, let's go celebrate. No. We need to talk with Nom Noms. I don't care how long it takes. We need to talk. Sure won't be too much longer. Do you want me to wait with you? Um, nope. No, I gotta do this alone. It's my problem now. Alright, we'll tell you later what happened. I didn't have much longer to wait. It was only three minutes before Dr. Nom Noms came. I saw him long before he saw me. He looked... I guess you could say he looked determined. When he noticed me, a surprised expression crossed his face. He scurried over as quickly as he could. Trillion. Yes, it's me. I've got something to say to you. Based on your responses throughout this game, you unlocked... Bad Ending. Uh-oh. Well, it's not like we haven't been aiming for this or anything. Alright, let's see it. What were you thinking? You knew I wanted to lose the campaign. I told you that over a hundred times. I even fired you. Why didn't you get the message? I've never seen him so angry. I just thought... Thought what? Thought I'd be happy if you intervened and kept the campaign going? You were wrong. I'm sorry? Guess what? I don't care. You just ruined my life, Trillian. If you think I'm gonna forgive you, you're delusional. I wanted to quit. I wanted to go home and retire. But no, you had to step in at the last second and convince my father to bend the rules. Are you an idiot? You tried to ruin my dad's life and mine. You know, because apparently, for the first time in forever, I'm decided to be completely selfish here and say this is all about me. Never mind all these inspirational speeches about helping people and there being noble causes and, you know, not wanting to ruin other people's lives like, um, like some have wrote and done to Nom Noms. Never mind all of that. Now it's all about Nom Noms and him wanting to retire from this uh, deceptive campaign that he set out on from the outset. And he wouldn't let me quit at the beginning. Um, like, I offered to quit as the first thing that I did. And he wouldn't let me go. And he said, you know, I didn't have anything else going on, basically. So I should work for him. I mean, okay, yes, he's been generous with, like, my pay and severance package, but... I mean, that, that is quite generous and appreciated. But, yeah, he doesn't know how to, like, he contradicts himself so terribly. I didn't know Sox was your father. I did. Sox told me when I started this campaign. We came up with a scheme together. I lose the election. As a consolation prize, I become the next leader of the Sharp Laws. We keep the political party in our claws for another... Oh. Uh-oh, so he's kind of evil, isn't he? Not just wanting to make money off the book deal. Now he wants to run the Sharp Claw Party. 
It was the perfect scheme. I spent months creating this fake nice guy persona. Too nice to win the nomination, Dad said. And he was right. I should have lost. Now, thanks to you, everything has come crashing down on our heads. Now, people know Sox and I are related. I can't cash in on the deal. The scheme has come to nothing. I hate you more than anyone else I've ever hated in my whole entire life. Oh. You know, that's your problem. That you came up with this scheme, got yourself into so much trouble, and then I did what I could to help you, and now you don't even appreciate it. I'm just saying. Wait, are you saying your nice personality was a lie? Of course, no one's that nice to everyone. Are you an idiot? Cats only cuddle up to people when they want something. Instead, a cat doesn't want you anymore. Out come the claws. Ooh, he scratched me. Nom nom, no, you're supposed to be my friend. I don't have friends. There's nobody. I can count on besides myself. Everyone else, like Lizzie, is a toy for my amusement. A wave of anger burst through my shock. What'd you do to Lizzie? Oh, she didn't tell you? What a waste. What did you do? I got her pregnant, then I dumped her. Fifth cat in two months, a new record. Wait, should I tell you something else? Something like we tried, but it didn't work out? You're horrible. My father's son. He and I both got to the top of the world through manipulation, exploitation, and extortion. And we'll do the same to you. What? Hope you enjoy having your house condemned, and I having your taxes go up. And the severance pay you got for me, consider it cancelled. I will ruin your life. Just like you ruined mine. Yeah, maybe we have that discussion in closed quarters, where, like, there aren't cameras everywhere. I didn't want to hear anymore. I ran away, crying. Nom Noms is as good as his word. Or as bad as his word, I should say. He did everything in his power to make my life miserable. And the thing is, he had a lot of power and influence to extend. I ended up moving in with Lizzie. We helped raise her kittens together. When they grew old enough to ask about their father, we told them their dad was dead. I never saw Dr. Nanos again, and frankly, I don't want to. He went on to become president, and his approval ratings were among the highest ever. If only people knew the truth about him. And the bunnies. I mean, who picks bunnies as their running mate? Cat President, or Perfect Union, by O A Rock Studios. So, um, yeah, that was perhaps not the best ending. Although one could argue, that was quite an interesting ending. You know, supposing that there was the scheme the entire time, then what we did was actually the right thing to do. I mean, yes, hearing the truth hurts, but we, I mean, if that's the fact of the matter, then it's good to learn the truth. Yeah, welcome, Railbird. You just made it. Just in time. Yeah, it was a good... Um, so, yeah. How do I cover what just happened without spoiling it? I don't know. Video on demand's always there. Although you might have to skip like an hour and a half into it, because it took me a little while to warm up and prepare for this, but I think it turned out well. So, yeah, I wonder what could be done 
about um, some more, um, I don't know, Creative Commons licensed music and such. It'd be cool if I were able to like stream this game and not get the audio muted. So I'm trying to come up with something clever to say here to at least try to drown out that that thing that sounds like music in the background. Um, so we got a question here. Do we ever finish the official release of Star or the original release of StarCraft? No, that's still. Um, I still need to play that mission Black Sheep Wall. That'll be coming up soon. If Hopefully I'll find time this weekend for it. I'm not sure if I'm going to pass it on my first day of attempting it. Hey, everybody. It's pretty hard. Alright, so yeah. O'Rock Studios produced Cat President, A More Perfect Union. So, we unlocked an ending. Um, apparently there are a lot of endings that are still locked. So we got Kale, Thunderpaw, Rover, Frisky, Nom Noms, and DJ Nibbles. Oh, we just saw the credits, otherwise it would hit the button. But yeah. I guess the moral of the story is um, if you find out that your employer is doing something shady, maybe find a different employer. Or maybe just, I don't know, don't be the worst antagonist. And somehow good things will come from a bad relationship. Um, just because you start off in a bad position doesn't mean you have to end there. And, yeah, for sure I didn't do the main character any favors by being as antagonistic as possible. Although it was an interesting ending. Um, an interesting plot throughout. So, yeah, if you really want me to do more of this, um, petition me to do it, I guess. Um, I didn't realize just how long these campaigns were. And maybe they're not all the same length, but I have a feeling that most of them are pretty similar in length, so... You know, probably aiming to do it tonight was not the most brilliant idea, but that's okay. So, yeah. Yeah, that was the name of the cheat code, which uh, disabled the fog of war. Oh, okay, maybe I'm mistaken. But there's one StarCraft stage where you just get Zerg rushed and it's the most horrible thing ever. I still have to beat it. So. Yeah! We got the best ending. We're the best president ever. Um. So, yeah. We beat another game. Unless people want us to go through and, like, pick other candidates and pursue those routes. But yeah, I hope this has been educational, or fun, or, I don't know, it's a visual novel. Not my typical category of game, but I think we made it work. Um, sorry about making too many decisions. I just felt like after the first few decisions, the rest of them didn't make that big of a difference. Um, at least in terms of the quick quips and responses that came back. Uh, obviously, some of the decisions must have affected the final score and result, but, you know, we play this for the adventure. It's not about the outcome. I mean, it kind of is, but it's a lot about the adventure and getting there, so. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, I've already said I hope this is educational and whatever. So yeah, see you next time. Have a good night.